Hey everyone, Steve Weintraub here. Uh, uh, I'm with the director of Paddleton. Did I say that right? Because I was so, I was so nervous I was going to say Paddington or anything else. Is there a movie called Paddington? Right. It's about a bear, perhaps. <laughs> and, oh, this, we can't give him any press. But, right, no, no. Yeah. We, we can. That, that's a good movie. But you yeah. also made a good movie. So there's nothing... I've seen it. Paddington 2, I'm already doing terribly at this because I'm promoting another film. Paddington 2 has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So go see Paddington 2. I, I agree. Or Paddleton, perhaps. We should talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Uh, before we get started, as I was saying a second ago off camera, I want to give a huge thank you to Kia Telluride and all the other sponsors here. Uh, Sundance is really expensive. They've all been great. I just want to th say sincerely thank you. <laughs> Wait a second. Do you feel refreshed? Wait in, in a Not second. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. Thank you, Life Water. <sighs> <laughs> um, so uh, talk a little bit about how the project, no one will have seen it. Uh -huh. who's, who's actually watching the interview and I hate doing the generic thing but talk a little bit about like what it's about sure yeah it's um it's a it's a story about these two uh, misfit buddies starring Ray Romano and Mark Duplass these uh, kind of strange guys that are neighbors and best friends and soulmates and it's a it's a platonic romance you know between the two of them bromance as we call them and uh, it's about it's a film about letting go because the younger guy Mark actually gets diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer and his uh, his only friend in the world the guy that gets him the most has to help him uh, has to help him die yeah so he's got to let him help him let go. Well, one of the things that uh, I applaud you for is that this is not subject matter that a lot of people tackle. Oh, it's a comedy. I forgot right. to say. That. <laughs> It's all about timing, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, the jokes work better in the film. Um, the, but, but seriously, the subject matter is something that is, it's, it's not talked about. It's not common subject matter in movies and TV. We don't like to talk about death. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so was it tough putting the film together in terms of finding someone who's like, I want to finance that. That's for me. Well, I mean, I'm pretty lucky to be working with people like, uh, you know, Duplass and Netflix that say like, yeah, you want to make this this film? You don't need to put a cape on them and we can talk about the, the shit that's going to make people uncomfortable. You know, find some humor, make it entertaining, cast somebody that's going to crack some great jokes. There's two people, I guess. Uh, but yeah, no, I think they, they got it and we're really lucky to be... Um, allowed to make a movie like that. I agree with you, yeah. A lot of people are going to get scared with something that's going to be depressing and not marketable, but you put it on Netflix and it finds the right people. Com or I guess the right people will find it. Completely. Yeah. I heard they have an algorithm. Um, can't confirm that. Right. Or deny it. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, <laughs> there is some great back and forth between Ray, be between your, uh, in your cast, and I'm just curious, how much was that on the page how much is that being found in the moment or in rehearsals? So there isn't a ton of page. It's not a full script. We didn't have a full script. We had um, a treatment. We outlined, you know, the the beats of the story. You know, Mark and I wrote it together, um, and then we did some some rehearsals, if you want to call them that, where, you know, Mark and Ray and I would just kind of shoot the shit and talk about the scenes, and you know, Ray would crack some jokes. We'd be like, oh my god, you guys, kind of build a scene around a couple of those jokes. Actually, a couple. Uh, yeah, a couple of moments in, in the movie are based off of uh, funny bits that he brought to it that were, you know, thematically just, just made sense and were hilarious. But uh, no, a lot of it was um, building the movie around those couple of sessions we had on the phone and in person, just kind of vibing it out. And then we improved a ton on set, or I should say they improved a ton on set. And I was trying to keep up with, you know, the joke and the jokes and the, the, the just the, the shifting storyline. Well, see, that brings me, uh, ultimately, the edit is the final rewrite. And I would imagine when you have improvisers like this, it prevents both good things and bad things in the edit. Because you, I'm sure you had some scenes that were pl could be played two different ways, both of which are great. And which one do I do? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, it was weird to me. You know, we shot this relatively quickly for what uh, a, a film, you know, usually takes. We, sh we shot, like, you know, three weeks. But um, it didn't really hit me as to how much we shot until, you know, Ray had seen a cut and he's like, wow, I can't believe you were able to pull it. You know, we shot so much. And I was thinking like, what are you talking about? It was, just, it was a three week movie. And then I realized like, yeah, we shot so much. We tried so much stuff. And there's, there's you know, a lot of beautiful, funny, precious moments that you gotta let go. 
And uh, that all happens in the edit for sure. And I'd, I would have to attribute a lot of that to um, working with a really good core producing team that um, you know, knows how to see what's working and you know, help guide that stuff. And, and you know, we screen the, the film with some really smart filmmakers that we trust and kind of see like, what's resonating for you. you know? Are we going too dark? Are, we, you know, are you guys loving these characters as much as we are? So um, major, major team accomplishment there. Where did the idea for uh, Kung Fu and, oh, wait, I want to make sure, the Death Punch. Death Punch, yeah. Uh, where did that come from? Well, oh, uh, we should say, in the movie, <laughs> Death Punch, and th their relationship is, uh, they bond a lot on Kung Fu movies. Yeah, they love Kung Fu movies and frozen pizza and this made-up game of Paddleton. And, um, yeah, the, the, the movie Death Punch is their favorite movie, and obviously there's some thematic stuff there. But it was just this... Uh, this little, it was a kung fu movie idea I had. I was like, that'd be kind of cool to make this. And then I realized it would fit into this movie. And so I kind of got to make that 70s kung fu film within a film. I don't want to give it away too much, but uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I very much enjoyed that. And also, obviously, where did the game come from? The title of the movie? Um, I mean, we made it up, to be honest. It was, um, it was, uh, it, we, we scripted it as Paddleton just because it was kind of like, that's that's a new made-up game, whatever. And then um, I just went out with a racket and just kind of tried to make up a game with like a trash can and a ball. I was, bought a bunch of different balls and was like trying to, I don't know. I, I mean, didn't you do that as a kid? Like, it wasn't that like fun? No. Like, you'd make up your own games? Wasn't that better than like any, any organized sport you could do? It was just like kind of screw around with whatever, you know, tennis racket and ball and trash can and you make something up. And all right, so the most important thing about that game is that there is no winner, right? It's a collaborative game uh, where these two guys are just trying to win together, which obviously has some thematic undertone. Yeah. Um, you filmed in a town that I didn't even know existed in California. Solvang. Solvang, Solvang Solvang, exactly. Yeah. Where, where, how did you find this town and tell people about it? Yeah, it's this like Danish town that it's like it was like airdropped like from like straight out of Europe, airdropped into wine country, California. It's a very strange place. Some people, there's like all these tourists that go there um, sort of for the wine tasting. It's right next to where they filmed um, Sideways, another great movie you guys should see. We should keep plugging. We should yeah. keep plugging other movies. I also liked uh, Monty Python's Meaning of Life. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but um, it's this like weird town that is really quirky and all the, all the facades have this... Um, uh, you know, Hans Christian Andersen vibe to them. And um, it just kind of fit, you know, who the, who the characters are. Like, you know, just, just two quirky guys that don't totally make sense, but like are so authentic and you can't stop appreciating how different they are. Completely. But the thing is, it's like, it's so, it's visually like so interesting and I just have never seen it in movies before. Or if it's been there, I have not noticed. I've wanted to shoot something there for a while. It's only two hours from LA, and actually, um, yeah, I was like googling. I was like trying. To, I was like looking up. Like, there's got to be more movies that have shot here. So, no, it's untapped, which is crazy. And like, a lot of people should go make their movies there in like a year from now. Uh, <laughs> just give us like a year, you know. Right. Because we released on February 22nd on Netflix. Was that a good segue? That's kind of rough. I, I actually think that was a great segue okay. and uh, letting people know <laughs> that the movie's coming. But uh, talk a little bit about the the working for Netflix. Because I've spoken to a lot of filmmakers. Yeah. And everyone says great things. They just say what? that they were... Yeah, I know. Uh, but <laughs> they could all be lying. Uh, yeah, working with Netflix is great. This is uh, my third film with them. Um, and um, they're they're wonderful. They, they get that, like... They should have as many different voices and, 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 and tones and, and as many different kinds of films as possible because obviously that gives people a, a broader selection. Then, you know, uh, it gives the viewers uh, a sense of choice and, 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 and joy in, in picking the things that they like. One of the things that I really appreciated about the film is that it is, uh, it just plays everything very realistically. Like it's yeah. a realistic friendship. It's not, you're not trying to, you know what I mean? And so talk, talk huh. about capturing Never that. Thought of, no, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, but just talk a little bit about that. Like you're not trying to Hollywoodize what's going on in terms of the disease and stuff. Well, the story is definitely about um, the friendship to me. And it's about these two guys who, we see him all the time, right? In a pharmacy or whatever, a guy with a weird mustache or a fanny pack or whatever. No, no offense to mustaches, fanny packs or anything, but there's that guy that is really quiet, maybe seems a little weird to us if we're being honest and just a little bit judgmental. And um, 
we have all these preconceptions of this person and usually we're not going to talk to them and we just kind of like think like this guy's probably weird and maybe creepy what and, and at the end of the day they're 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 these real people with feelings as well and like it was really important to tell a story about two of these guys who are loners who were lucky enough to find each other their friendship being incredibly important in not feeling alone i think we all obviously as humans uh, are afraid to feel alone and so it's uh yeah it's just it's a story about that that relationship and there's nothing more authentic than relationships i think completely um i want to say thank you so much for coming in the studio i want to give again a, a huge thank you to kia telluride and also uh, i hope people tune in uh on february 22nd on netflix yes so they can watch it if you have a subscription it is free fantastic yeah thank you and there's a new feature as well um you're not able to turn it off if you don't like it starting february 22nd so just <laughs> just hang in there right not that you wouldn't like it this got awkward right. help me end this right we can we can edit before that last sentence <laughs> <laughs> right. um, no seriously thank you for coming in thank you